Welcome everybody out to another video on our Lean Tech channel. And we have Joe Doherty here today who's going to show us some really cool, um, it, like a really, really cool plan that he does uh, in a tact format or time by location format in Bluebeam. And I know you're going to love it. So stay with us. All right, everybody. We've This is going to be such a cool video. Joe is, by the way, uh, Joe is a professional in all aspects. Not only does he have an amazing beard that is competition for Brandon Montero, but he's doing some great things. So he, he messaged me one day and was like, hey, I want to check out some of the uh, planning that we're doing. And he uses Bluebeam, which I love. Everybody knows I love that program. And so I wanted to see, Joe, would you mind sharing with us the the awesomeness that you showed me the other day like uh, how did you get into the format how does it work and then i also loved your layers and how you break out tasks so could you share that a bit with us sure um so i i used to do this on a whiteboard in my trailer um i always called it before i knew what uh, that i used the term tact um I I always just called it a modified pull plan because it doesn't actually follow like the last planner format um but i would basically use it to so that we all could get a visual of what um what the next few weeks look like um and it was really important um on um uh, the the first gas station that i did because i had never done a gas station before so um i i i had to see it Right, in order for me to understand yeah. exactly what our process was going to be, because I didn't yep. have that in my head. Um, so I would lay this out on my whiteboard, sticky notes, the whole bit. And um, I found that my biggest challenge was because I have a relatively small trailer. It's got room for a plan table um, and it's got room for my desk. It was tough for me to get more than two or three foremen in there to look at this whiteboard with me. So then I thought, uh, well, well, I, I, I saw an article where somebody was talking about doing pole planning in a blue beam session. Um, and it, it wasn't this, but just seeing that sparked an idea uh, that, gosh, maybe I can make a virtual whiteboard in blue beam. So I was between jobs at the time, and um, I started thinking about the best ways to do it. And of course, like anything, there's several iterations, and and you know, constantly improving things. And and so where we're at today now with it is um, this virtual whiteboard here, and I've created a toolbox uh, over here. If anyone's familiar with Bluebeam toolboxes, I created a sticky note for each discipline. So. That's uh, great. Everything's color coded. The only problem with that is when you have, we have a lot of different disciplines here, and there's only so many colors uh, that are distinguishable. <laughs> um, so I started. Uh, I wanted to kind of lay this out on a blue beam grid. Uh, so I was trying to figure out how I could do this quickly, efficiently, make it really like a whiteboard, and um, I thought, well. If I if I build my whiteboard on a grid in Bluebeam, um, and then I use the snap to grid function in Bluebeam, now oh, I yeah. can drag these, I can drag a sticky note over. Oh my gosh. And, That's so um, awesome. Yeah, I could drag a sticky note over and it'll snap right in my little box for me. <laughs> so awesome. I could I could do that, and so I know blue is framing. So you know I'd go in here and and just say uh, you know I might just say roof panels, and um, and whoops my computer's not keeping up with me. Uh, and I know that I want I know that it's um, going to be uh, on the uh, in the convenience store. And let's just say, hypothetically, we're going to set roof panels starting September 18th. Um, and so I, I put it right over there and then I could build off of that. But then I started um, playing around with the layer function in Bluebeam. And so I assigned a layer to each, uh, each discipline. So now, uh, right now, this isn't too complicated. Um, 
But, you know, if it was if there was more going on, uh, I mean, the whole idea of doing this is to make sure that I don't stack the trades. I I, I like a lot of us. I came from a, a, a subcontractor. I, I my background is in architectural millwork. Um, and so especially at the tail end of jobs, I mean, everybody's stacked onto each other. Everybody's stacked onto each other. And it makes it very difficult um, to get your job done and maintain a good attitude and everything. So as a superintendent, that's one of my biggest goals is I do not stack trades. Um, so as, as this gets more complicated, I thought, well, if I put each of these tools on a layer, then I could isolate, um, I could isolate the disciplines. So um, if I wanted to just see where my framers were, you know, I could start dropping out uh, disciplines here, and there are better ways to set up layers with with children and all that. And I just haven't gotten around to setting that up yet. Um, but now I could pull that out and I could see exactly where just where my framers are. Or maybe you know this makes sense to me, right? But Colin bringing in a a, a framing foreman. Um, you know, he might look at that and it looks like the Partridge family bus to him and he doesn't really understand what's going on. Uh, I could easily isolate his discipline. So say, OK, well, here you are. Here's where I expect you to be. Yeah, uh, I, I could or I could just, um, you know, I could just bring in the MEP trades. Um, just to make sure that that they're not stacked. That's so, awesome. I will mention here um, that if you look at this particular plan right here, actually, I'm going to switch to, so I I do a lot of long-term planning on here, and that this is for me, but that can get kind of cumbersome for, for people who maybe aren't used to that. So I have boiled this down to a four-week format. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Uh, this is the exact this is this is the exact plan that I used uh, last Tuesday in our foreman meeting with uh, with our MEP guys. So uh, I they're all in the room. They're all looking at this. I had these guys way farther spread apart. To to me, when I look at this, I say, man, you guys are on top of each other. Um, but you know, it, it was fantastic because. They're all in the same room and, you know, the plumbers, like we had the framer and drywall in there too. And the plumber said, well, could you guys maybe, uh, could you guys maybe just go start and the, uh, and the restrooms, get the restrooms framed out um, so that before you move to the back of house framing, we can get in there and, and because that's where the bulk of our rough in is going to be. And yeah. he was like, sure, you know, we could do that. So um, the, just, I was so encouraged by the uh, by the collaboration that that these four contractors were doing. The drywall framing company, uh, mechanical, electrical, and plumbers were all in the same room. And uh, anyway, you know, it just really it, it just really encouraged me that everyone was working together and and I was able to actually expedite my plan, you know, in, into a quicker format than I was than I originally thought. And so. It was it was fantastic. So, and can I? Can, I'm going to draw in here real quick. And yeah. people people ask me all the time, like, "Hey, is this attack plan?" Yes, the purpose of attack plan is to uh, maintain a flow and have that flow on a rhythm, broken out by zones. And so you see, everything over here is broken out by zone. So you have the time by location format. And then look at this. And I'm not I'm, you, Joe. You already know this, but I'm just talking to people on the video, right? You've got the exterior wall boxes, and then it flows right down here. If there's another uh, crew or resource from that same trade that's needed, they can coordinate between them. Look at the plumbing rough. It's beautiful, nice flow. And then let's look one last thing at the pre-rock, right? We go from here to here, and then there's a bit of a gap. And those are things that we want people to see. None of these are wrong, right? If I go back to this, Maybe the electrician wants to be in two spaces, right? Maybe this break right here is something that the trade wants, but the bottom line is everybody can see it. And so this production plan here on the four we look ahead is absolutely brilliant. And then, so just a couple of highlights for everybody. It snaps to grid. It's in a format. 
They are layered. It's easy to use. It's on an application where you probably already have your drawings. You already have your R5 submittals, any of your other deliverables. Everybody can access it. It's brilliant. Any any advice or closing comments as we close out this video, Joe? Uh, yeah. I, one thing that I, I did want to mention uh, is that when I originally started doing this, it was not time by location based. It was time by resource based. I had my resources in my left column. Um, okay. So that that was all um, that that was how each contractor kind of saw where they fell on in the plan. Um, I started this time by location listening to you. So uh, thanks for that, because it 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 really um, it really kind of helped create a better visual uh, of what's going on and where guys are um, all over the project. So I love that, Joe. And thank you for doing this. You're, what you're doing here is brilliant. And I just want to bring up that point. Once it's in a time by location format, now you can see to Joe's point flow, which is something that in other formats you can't see. And you can see in a single zone, what are the handoffs and interfaces, which are two of the most important considerations. And so, Joe, that was brilliant. And I hope everybody's enjoyed this video. Um, if you ever have questions, we can connect you with Joe, but he is a, an absolute professional with this. Thank you, Joe. On we go.